Do I like football? What kind of football? 49ers. The 49ers? Mm, isn't that pro? I don't think I like any pro teams. I think I only like college football. But you know what I do love? I do love gold. Do I have any gold on right now? Oh, these are my gold earrings. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and think, think about all the things that could be in this box if the card says, I love gold. And the only plausible explanation is that we are actually talking about gold today. So I'm hoping that there's a big gold ring in here that I can keep. Okay, minor problem with this piece is that it's not in the shape of a ring. I don't get some big old gold earrings, but this is this is pretty cool. This right here, this is a gold Ooh, nugget. Man. I don't think we've done a whole lot about gold. So you may be familiar with 14 karat and 18 karat. Um, those numbers mean like 14 parts of 24 is gold and the rest is alloys that are used to make the uh, piece a little bit stronger and easier to work with. And 18 would be 18 parts of 24 to be gold. The other parts could be nickel, copper, silver maybe. We are actually not just gonna have nuggets on the channel today and I'm actually bringing in Christopher and he is gonna talk to us, I'm guessing about gold. All right, Christopher, we're gonna, we need to do one thing. We're gonna snap our fingers and when I, at the end of three, this is gonna be a piece of gold jewelry. Ready? One, one two, two, three. three. Yeah, no, never mind. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that, that, that magic doesn't work. That's why jewelers still have a job. All right, what do we have today? Gold so nugget, 24 gold karat. Nugget. Well, actually not 24 karat. What? No, that is uh, <gasps> Oh, yeah. wow. So what is going on here? Typically, a lot of gold uh, nuggets uh, fall around 16 to 18 karat gold. You're right, a lot of them have like silver and copper and other trace elements in them, sometimes platinum group metals Rough as well. Gold is yeah, uh, you can find it, you know, as pure as 24 karat, but oftentimes it's got uh, other impurities in it. Yeah, but you it do have a to be a little hard. careful. Well, you do have to be careful with it because it is still, you know, malleable. So you don't want to scratch it or, or dent it because that is that is a gold nugget. You have different ways that gold is found. Sometimes it's found as as a trace element. So they'll take uh, dirt and they'll chemically refine it to uh, to make the gold. But uh, typically, when you find it, it's going to be an ore. So you would actually have a rock like this. Did you just pull it out of your pocket? <laughs> and uh, I've polished it on this side so you can actually see it. So this was actually found by a local gentleman who uh, had it assayed. Tell us what assayed means. Assayed means that it was chemically reduced to find out exactly how many parts of gold per unit of soil was there. So you can figure out exactly you know, how much gold yield for the volume of dirt that you're gonna to have to mine is, and then you figure out whether or not it's gonna be actually financially viable to do it. Cool. What you're seeing here is actually copper. You've got copper, you've got silver, there's traces of gold throughout and other elements. So the shiny bits are actually the copper because all the glitters- Is gold? Is not gold. <laughs> all right, so this looks a lot different than my earrings. Do you wanna tell mm -hmm. us why there's different colors? So uh, when gold is alloyed, um, it's uh, it's basically you take pure gold and then you combine it with different parts of uh, in in 14 and 10 karat gold's case silver and uh, copper. Since you're using a white metal to alloy with the gold colored metal, it actually lightens it up. You'll typically notice that 10 karat gold is often a much brighter yellow because of the higher silver content than 14 karat gold, and because of the lesser content, 18 karat gold is usually more rich in color than 14 karat or 10 karat gold. 22 karat gold is the closest that you'll typically see in jewelry yeah, uh, to gold's natural color. One of the things, uh, you know, gold ore, you just refine that for gold. Gold nugget like this, this one's from Australia, those actually have a collectible value because you know the country that it came from and as a nugget, it's worth more than just what the, uh, the element. What, what is more often found? More There's often found is just trace I elements. Thought. Yeah, that's why the nuggets have a, a better value. So here we have another type of gold. Jewelry. No. False. So, this one, and we gotta be very careful with that off. one because that one is crystalline gold. Okay, tell us what crystalline gold so is. So crystalline gold, you can actually see the crystal structure of the gold. Uh, gold has a uh, crystal structure. Do you know what crystal structure has? Cubic. Cubic, exactly. And so you can see cubic crystal forms in gold and those have a much higher value even than the nuggets do. This one's from Mariposa County, uh, California. 
and right is uh, attached to the quartz matrix. Now to get these, uh, these specimens like this, the gold is actually running through the quartz and one of the things they'll do is they'll take a battery tester and touch it to different areas of the gold to see if they're connected so the electricity will conduct through oh, it. Cool. Then they'll uh, use a very, very strong acid to remove the quartz, leaving these beautiful quartz uh, or gold crystals uh, exposed. Uh, you can also have uh, just basic nuggets and uh, your more basic nuggets. Yeah, I've got a little bit of everything in my pockets I usually do. You're like Mary Poppins. <laughs> so, Holy um, moly, you are like Mary Poppins for jewelry. <laughs> So uh, here we have another gold nugget. This one would actually be on the lower scale. So you would basically have your least, like this is just worth the pure metal of the gold. This is gonna be worth slightly more because I wanna say only about 4% of gold is found as nuggets. Once you've actually got the gold out of the ground mm -hmm. uh, and it goes through a refining process, then you wind up with, uh, oh, this is what we call so like cute. casting shot. Let me see. So this is gold that has been refined to pure gold. <gasps> And so uh, this would then be alloyed, and this is what goes into making jewelry. And so once you've uh, got the shot and you do your jewelry, then you wind up making your cast and finished piece. I see those over there. What's over there? Okay, these are also, so another step. So if you're making jewelry, oh, you wind up findings. with uh, little findings, you know, little clasps describe... and things like that. Finding. So these are pieces that you would use to make jewelry from. So here you have for earrings. Earrings. And posts. there's a little place for you to have uh, dangles coming off of that. These are clasps. These are specifically like pearl type clasps for pearl necklaces. Make findings for jewelry. You can make finished pieces of jewelry. All of those are good. And these are just little uh, beads that you would use for spacers. So yep. if you were going to do different gemstones, you would put these in between the whole, so they don't whole rub. Kid right here. Oh, yeah. What and else? then. Um, one of the things that you can do with, uh, one of the things that's going to happen over time is eventually you're going to wear the jewelry and jewelry breaks. So eventually you wind up with scrap. And so once it's broken or it can't be used anymore, then uh, it gets collected and uh, then someone will send it off to the refinery or they'll actually melt it down. Now, if they melt it down themselves, uh, instead wild. of sending it off to the refinery, um, so a lot of artisans like to make their own jewelry. So this is uh, 14 karat gold jewelry, approximately 14 karat jewelry. Um, since this was made at home with gold that the person collected and melted down, so. you might actually have a fineness varying anywhere between 10 and 18 karat because they mixed different golds together and they so might pretty. have melted some pieces that, that uh, they didn't know what they were. So one of the things you get, uh, if you take this gold down and you melt it, mm -hmm. and then you cast it into new jewelry, you'll see on the inside these little areas of blemishes here I do see that, and yeah. if you loop them what you'll notice especially right here is that you have pitting oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got all sorts of little things that go into making a change that chain that are actually not pure gold and without refining it down to the elemental gold and making it back into shot you'll wind up with uh, impurities which will form bubbles and can make the ring weaker okay. and more prone to breakage so basically so, gold needs to be refined before it's melted down yes and so um and other ways that you can get is you know different scraps I've like this that, as yeah, well i've seen a whole lot of we've got a whole lot of cool things on here do you know what that is ew gross <laughs> I was wondering how long it would take you to recognize that one. So one of the ways that you actually wind up with Justin, it is uh, bridge work. Where did work. you find that? This was one of the pieces that was sold as scrap tell from me an you estate. You did not buy that. Yes, this was uh, this one was from the state. <laughs> One of the things that gold is also used for, aside from jewelry, is it's very inert in the human body, so it's used a lot in dental work as well. And uh, a lot of the times, the bridge work, if it okay, has to be replaced, that, people don't want to throw it away, and please. it winds up in the scrap I'm pile. Sorry, that's disgusting. Get that out. <laughs> Get that out. It's completely cleaned out and been sterilized multiple times. Yeah, so don't worry gross. about that. You're so you're gonna find an old piece of hamburger on the. <laughs> you want to uh, brush and floss, open everyone. This one. Is that what my Chick-fil-A ketchup comes in? Well, you wouldn't want to dip your fries in that, that's for sure. What is that? So this is okay. yet another stage in the uh, life cycle of gold, and this is actually Can what I happens. Can inhale that? You, you don't have to worry about it, it's much too heavy. This is actually pure gold. 
So even if you did inhale it, you shouldn't have any problems because again, gold is very inert in the what body. What does inert mean? Inert means it won't react with your body. So what your is body that? will just pass it through. This is actually gold that has been chemically refined. So they will take, for chemical refinement, they will take this gold and they will uh, uh, use an acid called aqua, aqua regia. And that's the acid that's strong enough to melt gold or it dissolve look gold. Like gold though. It will, this is how it precipitates out. And you're correct, it doesn't look like, it looks like cocoa powder. When you take the gold, uh, you dissolve it in the aqua regia, then you use uh, various chemicals to precipitate different elements out. And one of the, one of the ones you use is a uh, is sodium metabisulfate. Uh, that precipitates the gold out, and literally you have this liquid, and when you put this chemical chemical in there, the gold literally just rains out of the uh, out of the acid and collects as what looks like Why these little coffee grounds like at the that? bottom. Then what? you have to wash it off. If you take a blowtorch to this in a crucible, then what you'll wind up with is something that looks very much like a nugget. That's cool. And then that can be further refined and the cycle starts all over again. But this is literally what you start with. Your gold out of the ground, into the uh, pure for making jewelry pieces or pure jewelry. Then it gets scrapped and either it's made into new pieces or it gets refined and the process starts all over again. And gold is something that you don't ever throw away. So, you know. Even if it's in your teeth. Even it's, if it's Russian in your teeth. Russian floss, kids. You do not want to end up with gold in your teeth. What do you do? I mean, what do you do if you have a grill? We're going to take a closer look at this crystallized gold. That right there you are seeing, that's a member of the cubic crystal system. If you want to learn more about the cubic crystal system, check out the video that Elizabeth and I shot a couple months ago. Um, mm -hmm. It is up and we will pop the links up for you all. And now Christopher is gonna pick his favorite piece that does, has not been in the human body um, <laughs> to show you a closer look at. Now, I, I really love these uh, just because this shows, uh, you know, recycling at just the base level. You know, someone literally took scrap gold like this, melted it down in a crucible, made this band, and then all of these pieces here, he rolled the wire out. He, That's he took cool. the, he took the, the the melted gold, rolled it into wire, and did all of this design work on the surface with uh, with the wire by hand. I hope you learned about the life cycle of gold. Why don't you do us a favor? Go and look at your jewelry box or your mom and dad's wedding ring or who knows. Find us a piece of gold and see if you can find the stamp on it. Is it 10, 14, 18, or is it 22? Comment below and let us know what you found. We hope that you learned something from today's episode. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with your friends so they can be as educated as you and we can spread the love.